Hi everyone. This week, as you can see, I'm going to be playing Mutants at my locals. Now, Mutants is a new deck that I've recently picked up um, as I could get it fairly inexpensively. Um, it's a control deck and it's definitely playing, I'm definitely playing some cards that um, should help to steal some wins because the mutant strategy itself uh, is definitely a little bit uh, lower in power than things that I've played in the past, but uh, thanks to the hand traps and some of the other trap cards that you can play, uh, it should be able to hold its own um, at my locals. So, to get into the main deck, playing three mutant MO5. Now, when it's summoned, it searches a monster, mutant monster, from deck to hand, and then both it and ST46, which searches spells and traps on summon, have the effect to banish uh, tribute itself and banish a card from hand or face or field um, to summon the appropriate monster listed on its text. So, uh, if you tribute itself and summon, sorry, if you tribute itself and banish a monster, you can summon out Beast, which I'm playing two copies of because it's the best one. Um, Beast is a spell negation, which is great. Um, Mist, if you banish a spell, and Arsenal, if you banish a trap. So for a while I was not playing Mist because you don't really banish a spell too frequently with this deck, but um, I've made it the 41st card because um, just, just to have the option to go into that uh, if need be. Um, but that's it for the mutant monsters. Um, you don't want to see these in your hand at all. Okay, these are all bricks. Uh, the field spell lets you put them back, which is great if you do happen to draw them, or you can just banish them as the material, as the requirement for the uh, the lower level mutant cards. For the spells, we're playing three Pot of Extravagance. You don't really need your extra deck too much in this deck. I'm playing two Mutant Evolution Lab, plus one Terraforming, which will come up later. I'm playing one Mutant Fusion. I'm playing one Emergency Teleport, because the two lower level mutants are both Psychic types. One Terraforming to act as the third Evolution Lab, and one called by the Grave. Uh, so Mutant Evolution Lab, if you don't know, when you activate it, you can special summon a level 4 lower or lower mutant monster from your hand or that's banished. Um, so one play you can do if you open up both M05 and ST46 is summon ST46, search the field spell, use 46 to tribute itself and banish the M05, and then use the field spell to bring back the M05, which gets you into two of the um, bigger mutant monsters because you can then banish the field spell to get the um, mist out of the deck. Uh, so the traps are three mutant expansion. Um, when you activate it, you can take a level four or lower mutant out to your hand or special summon it, which is pretty good. Uh, searches your follow up and then obviously it's a continuous trap. So while it's on the field, if a level eight or higher mutant monster would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card instead. But being a continuous trap, you can also banish this as a material for one of the mutant monsters. Because even the bigger mutant monsters, these three, um, to activate their effects, you need to banish a card from hand or face up field. I didn't actually go over those, sorry. So Beast, um, banish a card to negate a spell, card or effect, and then banish it. Mist, uh, if your opponent activates a trap card, you can banish a card to draw two. And Arsenal, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can banish a card to banish a monster. So that's those. Uh, for the other traps that we're playing, Playing three Mutant Cry. Now this is probably a card you play too. Um, I might side the third copy out in games. Um, Mutant Cry is a fusion, not a spell, but it's a fusion card for the deck. Um, but you shuffle back the materials. So just using one of the level three or two mutants, the lower level mutants, uh, makes Cry alive because you can use Cry, banish a monster, and then that gives you two mutants to then use the cry to shuffle them back and summon out uh, one of the fusions, which I'll show you later. 
Um, then for some more generic tracks, playing there can be only one. It's obviously very strong. Um, and you can play around this fairly decently because you're uh, psychic being your main type, but they can remove themselves from the field to summon um, any of the bigger mutants, which are all differently typed. There's Beast, Spellcaster, and I think Machine might be the other one. Yep, Machine. I'm also playing two Ice Dragons Prison and one Trap Trick as, I guess, a third copy of Ice Dragons, fourth copy of Mutant Cry, um, or as a fourth copy of Infant Impermanence, which is I'll put here at the end because it'll also tie in with the hand traps. So this is just another trap card. Um, sometimes this is a side out option for some of the other cards in my side deck um, because the other two hand traps that I'm playing are very strong. But they're the traps. And then the last few cards are hand traps. Um, this is the main reason I'm playing this deck because D Shifter is such a good card. Um, I feel like if you can main deck D Shifter, you should. It's pretty good. It doesn't affect the strategy at all. All your cards can be banished. That's actually probably better that they're banished. Um, because then you can get the lower level ones back from the fusion uh, the field spell, which is pretty good. In the graveyard, they're a little bit more useless, and you want to shuffle them back with the uh, trap card that uh, fusion summons. And I'm playing Gamma and Driver. So going second, I've got a lot of uh, decent disruption. Um, Shifter being obviously insane, Gamma being very high impact, and Imperm can be enough depending on the deck. So going second, we have lots of really great options to help slow down our opponent. Uh, for the extra deck, um, it's obviously we're playing Pot of Extravagance, so we're playing multiple Slaughter cards. Playing two Mugent Ultimus. Um, this one comes up a lot later into the game because you need to have set it up three level eight or higher mutants. Um, the main, the big guys in the main deck are level eight, and then the other monster you might be using, or probably will be using, is um, Mutant Synthesis which is the one that you'll be going into fairly frequently because Mutant Cry just needs two, uh, this one just needs two mutants with different attributes and you can, when it's summoned, target a card in the field and destroy it. And then when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can activate this card's effect to make it unaffected by that type of effect. So depending on what they've activated, if it's something that is threatening or if you just want to be immune to monsters, for example, then they activate monster effect. Synthesis can make itself immune. And Ultimus is a negation effect. So when a card is activated, or well, effect is activated, you can banish a mutant with the same type. So it's a little bit like um, Mechaba um, to negate and banish that card. And then what I did mention as well is that all of the bigger mutants, so the two there that you can see, plus the um, bigger ones like Beast, they all have floating effects as well. So um, the main deck ones float into a specific type when destroyed by an opponent's card. My opponent's card, so this one targets traps specifically, so it targets a banished trap to add back to hand. One of them does monsters, one of them does spells. Synthesis just does a banished mutant card. So one, any one banished mutant card comes back to your hand. And Ultimus targets up to one each of your banished monster spells and traps if it's destroyed by an opponent's card. So um, there's a lot of floating that happens with the uh, um, monsters themselves when they are destroyed. Um, the rest of the extra deck, playing two Omega, um, one Dingisu. Um, you can end up with two level eights on board uh, fairly easily. But, well, not, not fairly easy, so easily, sorry, not necessarily, but I'm playing it there just as a, a flex spot, I guess. Um, and then Omega is for the Cyframe package um, because you can trigger that going second or going first quite easily on your own turn. Um, I'm playing one VLS link. I'd play more if I had more than one. Just have the one though. Uh, and I'm playing two Unicorn, two Phoenix, two Cross Sheep. Uh, if they come up, they come up. Um, but the main thing you're going to be summoning from the extra deck is uh, Synthesis. And just in testing, um, depending on how far you get, um, BLS comes up a bit. And it's obviously hard for your opponent to uh, deal with, so that's why I'm playing that. Provided we don't banish it off extravagance. Uh, the side deck took me a long time to work out, just because I haven't played a control deck in a while, and 
I was really not sure how best to side. So this side deck is probably not ideal. Uh, it should do the job, I guess. Um, but because I'm already maining something like D-Shifter and some of the other uh, high impact cards, like there can be only one, um, made siding just a little bit more interesting. But I'm gonna play three Gamma Seal. Um, for control matchups, playing three Cosmic, one Harpy's Feather Duster. I've got a Solemn Judgment for going first. Going with two Anti Spell as my um, extra Floodgate of choice. I've obviously already got There Can Be Only One. Um, but I thought Anti Spell, it hits Control and Combo Decks because lots of Combo Decks, especially like Dragons and Heralds, which are both quite prevalent. Um, rely a lot on their spells, so anti-spell would do a pretty decent job of shutting them down um, when going first, so you can side in anti-spell and judgment, um, and that'll go in against either matchup, whereas other cards, other floodgates like summon limit, um, usually only hit the combo decks, so that's why I've gone with anti-spell, uh, and I'm also side decking three evenly matched. So notable cards that I thought could be pretty decent, and probably should be in the side deck somewhere. Um, something like Mystic Mine is a, a card that you could play. I've personally never played Mystic Mine before. Um, so I'm just I'm going without it, just using what I've got here. But that's the side deck. And now I'll show you just a couple of quick test hands. Um, there's not really many combos the deck can perform, but just to show you the, the type of interruptions that we're setting up on our opponent's turn. Okay, so for the first test hand, there could be only one. Ice Dragon's Prison, Pot of Extravagance, Called by the Grave, and Mutant Cry. So there's some good disruption cards here, but obviously no uh, mutants. So let's see what we get off Extravagance. So part of extravagance, obviously we're banishing six from our extra deck. synthesis there is a little bit unfortunate, but we draw into expansion and another extravagance, which is not the worst. Uh, so with this hand, obviously, we're just going to set a bunch of cards. Um, expansion is going to get us into our engine, um, because when you obviously activate it, you're special summoning a level 4 or lower mutant from the deck. So we would set expansion. Uh, we probably wouldn't set the cry here, only because it's not going to be live at all. At all. We don't necessarily get completely blown out. Um, but we probably just set four um, here and hold the other two. We've got a pot of extravagance ready for next turn, so we feel free to banish, uh, go through it, do that again, banishing six, and go from there. So then on our opponent's turn, we would activate expansion, use it to pull out MO5, And then MO5 searches ST46, which gives you then the follow up into the next turn. And these cards should be enough to hold off your opponent fairly decently um, until it comes back around to your turn. Because obviously you've got there can be only one. Now, if it gets back to, let's hypothetically, these two get used. Um, if it gets back around to this um, current board state, MO5 can use itself to get off the field. So we're obviously under there can be only one, so it would use itself to get off the field, maybe get rid of Cry, and then we're free to summon ST46 and go from there. Um, but obviously there's other things that we didn't do, we didn't draw, didn't activate extravagance, but that's test hand number one. And then we'll shuffle up and try a second one. But well, between cards like D Shifter and there can be only one. You've got some pretty big blowout cards that make life very difficult for your opponent. 
Okay, second hand. Trap check. Evolution Lab, Imperm, Ice Dragon's Prison, and Gamma. And this hand is not as good because there's just no way into an engine here at all. So um, this is just going to be a set three. Now, Trap Trick here, it can't pull out Ice Dragon's Prison because you're only playing one. It can be used to pull out an Impermanence or a Mutant Cry. Um, the only issue is Mutant Cry does nothing, so you probably will be pulling out an Imperm um, in that position. Um, so there's no way into your engine here. And this is why I'm also only running two Evolution Lab 1 Terraforming. I've seen some people play uh, like the full four copies, so three and Terraforming. But my issue with Evolution Lab is that, yes, you want it, it, it when you draw it with MO5, it feels pretty good. You can do some things with it, but it's, yeah, you're relying on drawing it with MO5. So it on its own, as you just saw, does nothing. So three copies is fine. And this is already looking pretty good. Shifter Extravagance, MO5, Prison, and SD4. Well, this is awesome. This hand's great. This is going to set up a few interruptions. Uh, Shifter is pretty huge already on its own. So we can go ahead and activate Shifter. And now we can go with Extravagance. Banish six. Both Ultimus there. Seems to happen quite a bit actually. Um, extravagance will get banished. And we draw two. Okay, oh, Beast and Evolution. Okay, that's, that's, that's really good actually. Because what we can do here is normal summon the ST46. Now, typically in this position, you would have searched the evolution there, but drawing it feels pretty good there. Uh, we'll search Cry, because Cry is going to give us another level of disruption by being able to summon that synthesis. Uh, we can now tribute ST46. Uh, actually, it's not as good because Evolution Lab can't use its effect to put back Beast because that would involve drawing, and Extravagance has locked us out from that, but that's okay. That's okay. So, um, SD46, Tribute itself, we'll just get rid of the... We'll get rid of the MO5 because it's still reusable with the Field Spell. The Beast can just sit in our hand, that's fine. Uh, it's going to summon out the second Beast from the deck. And from here, we can use the field spell. So when it's activated, it's going to bring back MO5. MO5 is going to search the ST46, which is our follow-up for next turn. Um, ST46 definitely being the better mutant to have, because it's what's searching you your actual interruptions. MO5 in this deck is really only searching out ST46. So having ST46 for follow-up is perfect. Um, now we can use MO5, Tribute, and we'll get rid of the Evolution Lab. And this time we're pulling out Mist. So Mist's effect is definitely the worst of the lot because being targeted by traps Sorry, when you're like, there's not many trap cards your opponent is just activating unless you're playing against a specific type of deck. So, uh, we've only gone for Mist here because having the two beast is useless because it's hard once per turn. Yep. And we didn't really want to banish these traps because these are our, um, our power cards going into next turn. So, we would set the two here. Cry and Ice Dragon's Prison, leaving two cards in hand. Um, Mutant Cry here is going to be used to... Oh, sorry, these are all banished because of Shifter. Um, Mutant Cry is going to pull out Synthesis. So from here, um, Mutant Synthesis can't be summoned with the two lower level mutants because they're both water. They have to be two different attributes. So in this case, we could just use the Mist. And it can't use materials from the hand. So it's going to be on the field, graveyard, or face up banished. So depending on if we, as soon as we know what our opponent's playing, we could 
use mist or we could wait until we've used one of their effects if they come up so maybe beast banishes the beast in hand to negate a spell and then we can use cry to put back two cry gets banished to summon out synthesis which uh, targets card and pops it on summon so that's a pop this when it's trapped activated big banish to draw two and beast is the spell negation and then we've got ice dragon's prison which we know what that does and i'll do one more really quick one just because these are a lot faster because we're not really comboing off as such but obviously our opponent was also under shift during that last hand so um we had a lot going our way with the way that hand was all right and last one Imperm, extravagance mo5 extravagance and gamma okay so we're going to be relying a little bit on this extravagance to see something decent okay so banishing six Shifter and third gamma. Wow. Okay, well the shifter is obviously not live here because the extravagance goes to the graveyard. If you could chain it in response, that would be crazy. Um, but the shifter is just going to be a dead card here, which is okay um, because MO5 needs a monster to banish. And we kind of wanted to hold gamma just in case of an ash because these set you up to be ashed fairly. You can be punished quite badly without having something like gamma because you tribute and banish for cost. So that's a, a pretty high price. So with normal summer MO5, MO5 searches out ST46, which is obviously our follow-up for next turn. Um, we're not going to be able to put it onto the field this turn to search out Mutant Cry. So we're going to be just... Yeah, we're probably going to die with this hand. But we would tribute MO5, banish the shifter, because it's useless now to pull out Beast. In this position, we're actually almost praying to get ashed here because uh, it would give our board just a little bit more. So if we get ashed here, we can obviously um, fire off Gamma, which is great. Um, but without being ashed, we just summon Beast and set Imperm. So it's two interruptions. It's one monster, one spell disruption, which depending on the deck um, <laughs> might be enough, but it's probably not. Uh, and our hand traps here, the rest of our hand is not doing anything that helpful for us. Um, obviously here we're just trying to survive until the next turn. Um, with Beast, we're adding back a mutant trap. Yeah, so there's not a lot going on here as you can see. We've got plays going into next turn, SD46 and Extravagance give us options. Um, what we could actually do here with Beast is when our opponent activates the spell, banish itself. So that negates our spell and it makes Gamma live. So now we have an extra disruption, which is actually not the worst. And we've got Gamma as a disruption. And then going into our next turn, SD46, Pot of Extravagance, and whatever it is that we're going to draw. If that was the case, that would be really good. Um, but that's going to be it for this video, and we'll see how we go um, this week at Locals. Thanks for watching.